uh, today the righteousness of Christ. The righteousness of Christ. I, I believe that the body has gotten it totally wrong about the righteousness of Christ. And uh, you can go to uh, Romans 10 and 1. I think that'd be a, a good place to start. Romans 10 and 1. Let me read this little intro. A lot of Christians make a terrible mistake by thinking that the terms being made, the righteousness of God, is referring to right living. Or thinking that God's righteousness towards us is based on how we live or govern ourselves here on the earth. Even though that plays a part, it is not to be compared to what the Lord is referring to in Romans 10, 1 through 3. On our best day at being righteous, don't come close to God's meaning and standard of righteousness. We have to be careful in how we view the two. And God give, and give God his just due in understanding what his righteousness towards us means. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, leading God us in all wisdom. We acknowledge you as having all wisdom and power. We decrease as you increase, Lord God. Lord Jesus, we submit to your Lordship. We are thankful that you sent your son Jesus to die for our sins and to redeem us. We are forever grateful. And everybody said? Amen. All right. Let's look at Romans 10 and 1. Now look at, look, now look at Paul's heart towards his people. He said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel, for Beaumont, for whoever it is in your family, that they might be what? Yeah. Saved. Now here's look at that key word. They might be saved. Because it's a possibility they may reject it, right? But the, but the core of, of his heart is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not, but not, but not according to understanding, from I mean, to knowledge. For they're being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. Mm -hmm. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Y'all see that? That's what we are as a church. That's that style. He don't want to be written. He know he's saved. He know he's going to heaven. But he's still wild. He still prays. He still smokes. His eyes haven't become submitted to God. His ears haven't become submitted to God. You can't tell because he already know what the word of God says. He been into theology school. He, he heard the best of the best, but he's still not broken in certain areas of his life. So the question is, what is the righteousness of Christ? Let's go to Romans 3, 1 and 1. What is the righteousness of of Christ. How do we compare the righteousness of God and the righteousness of what some church folk think? Because the righteousness of some church folk think is right living. That's not the righteousness of Christ, what Christ was referring to. And in Romans 3.21 it says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, but witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that what? Believe. That for there is no difference, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, now, now drop down to verse 26. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believe in Jesus. So the righteousness of God is that Jesus shed blood. He took the place of us that should have been condemned. And he took his righteousness and gave it to us and took the condemned and put it on himself. That's the righteousness of God. But, but if you look at Romans 10 is referring to, he said, these people obtain righteousness through their knowledge. They think it's right living. They think because I got saved, I don't smoke and I don't drink, that makes me righteous. No. According to Romans 12 and 1, that is your what? Reasonable service. Right? And then he said at the bottom of that, he said, 
be not conformed to this world, but be we be ye what? Transformed by the, the by the renewal of your what? That you may prove what? That is good and acceptable unto who? God. Righteousness. So the righteousness of right living in Christ come by Christ going on the cross. He substituted his righteousness for, for our uh, being condemned and took it upon himself, nailed it to his cross, that we may be the righteousness in the sons and daughters of God. So this compelled us to have or to live righteously. Right? The Bible said there is no one good, no not one. So therefore, even on my best day, I'm, I'm filthy rags. I go out there and I can witness. I can go out there and I can, I can encourage y'all behind this pulpit. But if I don't go home and treat her right, my righteousness is what? Filthy rags. It, it, it doesn't matter who I think I am right here. Where it really counts is what she thinks and he thinks, right? Because that's where they know where I am with God because they see the part that nobody else don't see. So the problem is people in Romans 10 and 1 through 3 think that just because nobody don't see the wicked side of them, that nobody don't see makes them righteous. That's that wild style. Y'all get that? That's that wild stallion that somebody uh, don't see. I'll I, I give you an example. I think I told this story one day. Uh, uh, Bishop Tudor told this story. <clears throat> he said that <clears throat> Pastor Friend of his was giving a house to his other pastor. And his other pastor that needed a house overheard it. So they had this big conference that sent all these pastors down on the front row, and the pastor of the house was the one that's giving away the house to this other pastor. And the other pastor that overheard that needed the house, thought that he was going to get it, told all, told all his friends, told his wife. Wife all had it. And when the pastor had called the pastor that he was going to get the house to up on stage, he gave him the keys, and the pastor that was on the floor jumped up and said, that should have been my house. The stallion had to come out of the closet and come to the forefront. Because in his mind, his righteousness had determined that he deserved the house. You see what I'm saying? The, what, what, what the Bible says in Matthew, it says that it's not that what comes out of a man that defiles him, it was go what? In. in. So it was in the heart, it's going to come out. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, that's, that's, that's backwards. It's not what comes into a man, but it what comes out of a man because out of a man flows what? Lying, adultery, fornication, murder, blasphemy, right? Now each one of these categories has underlings under these strong men. So when you think that a person has got done with, let's say for instance, blasphemy, you have a friend that says, I never blaspheme God. So the term that they using is a theological term that you haven't cursed God or cursed the Holy Spirit. But when you forsake yourself of the sin of the saints, you are disobeying God's word. And if God said it, God, that's what he meant, right? So if you're disagreeing with God by not assembling yourself, then all of a sudden you put yourself in the category of God's wrath. Because the more that you stay out of here, the more you stand out there, something got to give. You're giving your time and your attention to something. If you're watching something on TV, if you listen, listen to something with your ear. You know, every day that I leave work, I got this little prayer. I say, uh, in my car, I, I, I come against hitchhiking spirits, migrating spirits. I come against familiar spirits. I come against spirits that will try to influence my mind. Because if you don't think that these spirits is piggybacking or want to piggyback off you, I'm dealing with hundreds of guys, uh, a lot of employees, and I'm, and I'm working in an evil environment. So they would love to cling on me. I hope you're doing that for yourself. Hope you're doing that for yourself. And, 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 and so I don't need no other devil hanging on to me than the one I already got. The church said, Amen. all right, y'all see that? You got devils? You got them too. That, the longer you in this flesh, <laughs> the longer you in this flesh, and the closer that you get to God, he's going to reveal a certain stronghold that's there, that's been hiding, that's a wild stallion. Right? And 
thank, that's why I said thank God for his mercy. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We're talking about the righteousness, the righteousness of God. Uh, you know, because people sometimes have a tendency of forgetting that it's Christ. It's, it's, it's Christ's righteousness that allow us to not steal. You, you, you know, you know, uh, it, it, these guys tell some wild stories. In jail, you know, there's this one guy that, you know, told a story. He said that, uh, he said, Mr. Jackson, he said, uh, what, what, what happens if you, if you, uh, if your girl wants you to choke her? She asks you to choke her. You know, this wild sex thing going on. They want you to choke her. He said, I don't choke her hard. I just choke her just enough. And I said, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. A man of God wouldn't do that. A woman of God wouldn't want no man of God to do that. So where is that coming from? Oh, uh, that's wrong? Yes! <laughs> yes! I, and, and, but, but, it, but you know what? But it dawned on me. He don't know God. He don't know God's righteousness. He don't know... <laughs> know the, 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 the mercy of God, so he has to be introduced to the grace of God that will introduce him to God's mercy. Amen. Did this make sense? So, when we talk about the, the righteousness of, of God, it, 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 is, it is so broad that uh, it's, it's weird in how it can touch you, touch me, touch you, and touch you. Now, why you said this, now here's another guy that said he loved God. He loved God, and he said, Mr. Jackson, I got a question to ask you. He said, it's nothing really silly like that, but he said, you know, when I get out, you know, I'm going to beat the so-and-so out of my wife. And I said, but you're a Christian, right? You're a believer, right? Yeah, nobody wants you to be different. I said, well, you don't know the love of God. You don't know the righteousness of God, because what if Waldo is at the house when you get there? And you beating fire for fire. This woman got some short up bag up. I deal with No, you won't. You're going to look outside and stall. Because you're not willing to go inside of that house to meet fire power with fire power. In other words, I said when sin comes into or a believer comes into the same area or the same arena as righteousness, that sin cannot stand in front of righteousness and continue to do what it does. Amen. I said, because it's too much fire power. I said, you can stand there and be ready to knock her lights out. But if that woman is a praying woman of God, or she have Waldo there, or somebody that protects her, brother, it's no barrier. Her prayers and, and, and the muscles that she have behind that, her right living will stop you. I said, I don't know no evil that can penetrate God's children if they're praying and fasting and, and, and living right before God. I said, brother, you may be in some trouble. Well, I ain't never think about it like that. I said, because they're not teaching this down in the chapel. They're only teaching you word. They're only teaching you how to be saved, but how to close the gates, how to deal with the wild stallion in your saved life. In your saved life. Why, when I heard God say, I ain't just stop cussing. The people say, you need to stop cussing. I'm down trying to. I think the sun down to cuss you out now, but you tell me to stop cussing. <laughs> <laughs> you know how somebody sitting there talking to you, you got that cloud up, you got the word right there in your head. And, and you just want to tell them, you, you, you know, I, 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 I must confess, I, I, I watch this here. I remember back in my former church, but they used to always tell me in police, you get what they grew for you. Now, I'm saying, but I'm sitting in this church, I got cuss words in my head. You don't get, you know how many times I heard that? In other words, cultivate my gift that's in me. But you're sitting there telling me that I just should sit there and wait. I'm not the guy at the pool of Bethesda. You know, you gotta do it, just show me how to do it, I don't do it. You know, I'm not hearing Jesus, I ain't heard about pick me up, no. At some point in time, I'm going to see how that lady got in the pool, that dude got in the pool, that person got in the pool. All I got to do is just look at and see what they did and just scoot over there. 
you know, the church wants to handicap people behind the time. Right? So, therefore, they feel obligated to the church because it's somebody, but that don't make them the righteousness of Christ. The righteousness of Christ is what Jesus had already done on the cross. You just need to walk out your plan of salvation in what? Fear and in trembling. Why fear and in trembling? Because when the Almighty God brings your sin in front of you, you will be in awe how the sin did not take you out. <laughs> I did that, and the Lord is saying, yes. And you'd be like, whoa. You repent of it. You bring it under subjection. You bring it under the cross. Now God's mercy is in abundance. The Bible says in, 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 in the, I think it's in 2 Thessalonians where it says that, that God has bowls of mercy. That means it's, 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 it's everlasting to the person who wants it or who wants to be honest with God enough to say, Lord, I'm jacked up. You know, the Lord will give you peace after a fight with the enemy. You can see that in Matthew 4, 4, when Jesus was tempted, the angels came and gave him peace. But what did the devil say? I'll be back. So after every battle with the enemy, what I'm saying, if you're, if when the Lord begins to illuminate something that's in you that's not the righteousness of, 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 of Christ, meaning that it's not exhibiting, your behavior is not exhibiting what Christ has already done. He makes you go back and look at it again. Do you see? Once a person begins to look at the cross again, you'll have a fresh perspective that greater is he that it is in me than he that is in the world. Because why did Christ go to on the cross? To defeat and to destroy the works of the devil. Right? He did it in twofold. He walked the earth, walked about destroying the work, and he annihilated by getting on the cross. Therefore, we are made the righteousness, but sometimes the, de the devil does things to where it causes our judgment, but we don't really know that we're really free until the Lord begins to knock on that door. What God is knocking on your door at? What stronghold? What devil? What imp? What, what uh, personality that's showing up for you? You know, I thank God. I thank God. I, I was a funny guy coming up. This is what they told me. I was trying to figure how you mix anger and the comedian together. You know, I cuss you out one day and I get up and tell some jokes to others so that, that makes people confused about who you are. So I sat up there and I said, I want to do voices. I'm pretty good at this stuff. I can still do little boys on Avenue because, you know, I found out as a devil it's called altered egos. So anytime somebody mimics somebody's voice, that's an altered ego. That's not no gift. That's not no talent. That's a devil leaving Ed Murphy, coming into me, doing, <laughs> you know, you're doing all this stuff, and before you know it, I go back to me, go give Eddie back his voice. Y'all know that? It's called an altered ego. And so what I discovered is that a lot of these comedians, they begin to take on hundreds uh, or maybe thousands of these demons' personalities into the other person that's transferring out of that person into them, so therefore it's making them the righteousness of the devil if that's a such word. Because they're doing the devil's bid. Does this make sense? When a child desires to be Russell Westbrook when you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, the devil will say, I can oblige you to take you to hell. Do you see what I'm saying? All the kids now is 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 uh is is this getting about the bed not coming in here. I, you know I ain't saying they have their heads. They just get up. And, and 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 what's happening is that they saw an image somewhere that told them that that was cool. So what they're doing, they're exchanging the image of another person onto themselves. So it's exchanging the cross. So they take on the image of this person, moving Christ to the side. Now they got this altered ego that they don't even know about. Do you see what I'm saying? So when a person begins to take on another person's voice and say, man, you sound good. And what that person does, it feeds a... Uh, 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 an uh, 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 empty spot in the person so he goes and practice harder and go get more devils. He's starting to talk like LL now. 
He's starting to talk like Biggie Smalls now. He's starting to, y'all see what I'm talking about? So these people are out there in the world somewhere living their spirits to everybody because they're not serving God anyway. Do you see? And, and watch this here. Now this is how I cross over that make Romans 10, 1 through 3. But these people have their own righteousness, but it's not the righteousness, it's not the knowledge of God. It becomes so appealing to the church that the church goes out into the world and bring that in and they just because they don't drink and smoke, just because they don't have orgies, just because they don't do all what LL does, all what Eddie Murphy does, all, you see, we don't do all of that, but you bring in all of that person in, even though you just taking the person's voice. Even though you just taking the person's money, you're still obtaining something that God is saying, that's your own righteousness. Does that make sense? Watch this here. Let's let this in. Second uh, Corinthians 5, 17. Watch this here. Therefore, any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become what? Now, when, now, like I said earlier, now when I first got saved, I didn't stop cussing. I didn't stop busting up in the club. I didn't stop running around with women. The thing was, I, I, I read this, I was told this, but I wasn't taught this. I wasn't taught right living because I saw people in the church where I was attending doing some things that I was out there doing. See, I felt, the devil would never put people in front of you that's really living. He won't put the people in front of you that has the same familiar spirit. Right? So therefore, the devil will say, why don't you stop going to church? You know what I stopped doing? Stop going to church. What was my excuse? They doing it too. Anybody else say that? Old things. What are old things? Old things is that form of life. Old things is, is, is not the form of life in which we are referring to that crosses us over thinking that we're righteous because we're new creatures. No, we're new creatures back to the basis because what Christ done at the cross. It is not that I buzz up and stop going to nightclub. It is not because I stopped smoking. Those are the stronghold that comes after my new life experience because Christ has made me the righteousness of Christ. Now I gotta walk this thing out. I have to ask God, but I decide I want to smoke and, 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 and I don't want to. That is the new man born with the old man. When I when I when I want to creep, you know what? I creep. Get up, please, jump up. Oh, oh, yeah, we went on down. You know, I used to do that. So, uh, thank God for Jesus, and yeah, I ain't picked up nothing on the way out there. You know, uh, when I was out there, my mind was telling me don't do it, but my flesh was saying go do it. That was the old man wrestling with the new man because the old man had not mind had. Do you see? So when people uh, begin to look at righteousness, they be like, I don't cuss, but you're not supposed to. I don't steal. But the Bible says in Galatians, he that stole steal no more. Right? But but what if I just don't, I, I just gotta tell you, I'm in my pocket to keep with it, I just stole it. You right? Well, and I get in jail and I find Christ. The Bible says in Matthew, you're gonna have to pay every recompense. Unless God can open up the bars like Paul because he got something special for you to do. And then you got to be willing to do it. Uh, Jonah. <laughs> so, so the thing is, is that when you begin to, to look at this, you know, it, 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 it should bring a whole new perspective of what Christ did. Watch this here. Verse 18. And all things are of God who have reconciled us to what? Himself. By who? Jesus Christ, and has given unto us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. That means that when Christ went on the cross, he took our shame, our guilt, or whatever, and brought it upon himself. He reconciled us back to him, which made us the righteousness of God. Do you see? Now watch this here. It says, to wit, that God was in Christ. Wow, look at that. That God was in Christ, Reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their transgressions upon them, and have committed unto us the word 
of reconciliation. What, when was the word of reconciliation done? At the very end when Jesus said, it is finished. Right? So we have a lot to thank God for. So when he said it is finished, then that means that the old man wrestling with the new man don't necessarily have to be sold when I understand the cross. Do you see? My struggles in life is not as hard as they, as it seems or as the devil puts in front of me once I understand that I am made the righteousness of God. You know, a lot, I used to get on prep for God forgive me. I used to get on prep for a lot, but I'm understanding this thing now because I hear him say it a lot. Oh, you can say it a lot. I am made the righteousness of Christ. But I will oh, he didn't want your money. He has it for a plan. He has got the faith on. He didn't steal that. But I, I finally got it now that he wasn't trying to in, in, uh, uh, trying to get in your pocket. He was trying to let you know if you want this type of living, you have to be convinced that you are the righteousness of Christ because there's no broke God that we serve. <laughs> so, <laughs> we don't serve no buddy that he got. It, it, you know, what, 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 what man or what woman that has a child out there playing basketball will have him playing in in some penny loafers when you put me playing in tennis shoes. God, that's how we try to pay God. God will want his children looking just like those children. But the difference between those children and your child, your child is the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Do you see? Jordans don't make me. Sometimes I feel that he, I really thought that, you know, George get really make, I bought the first black in red shoes years ago and I was up there jumping and those shoes really had me thinking please that I can like, you, 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 you know how sometimes you walk through the mall you want somebody to see your shoes and you're like and everybody out there stand out there like oh you got them J's on oh man how they come $99.107 now they about a thousand dollars now do you see them you know exactly what you got here but at the same time the thing is that that lets you know how far they come because they call retro that minute the devil is trying to reinvent something that was already there. But watch this here. God is, is not trying to reinvent something because when we when the world see us, they supposed to already know. You still serve God after 10 years? Yep. You still serving God after 20 years? Yep. You ain't got to reinvent me. You know, one thing I love about some of the members that I, I used to go with at Triumph, I remember one of the members told me, he's a pastor now, he told me this here. He said, one thing about you and Felicia, he said, I love about y'all. He said, even though we don't talk to each other as much, he said, but when we see each other, we pick up right where we left off. We ain't got to go through all this stuff about, hey man, with the kids going crazy, you going through another war, you going through all this other. Oh man, no, we just pick up where we left off. Why? The righteousness of Christ. Does this make sense? I don't talk to Tiny that often, but it's good to know that when I talk to him and I see him, and you know, it ain't the same old, same old. It ain't the. We, we all, okay. Don't we all got a problem with our kids? Yeah. Don't we all got a problem with my spouse? Well, she don't have no problem with me, but you know, sometimes I don't. I'm just, 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 I'm we don't hear about Tom. We ain't seen Tom in a long time. We ain't seen Tom uh, uh, twirling G's feet in the church. Hey, he didn't say I need some prayer. You know, no, he ain't doing all. He ain't doing all. All right. Still serving all, right? So, but at the same time, we still look to see. Because, see, the, 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 the spirit bears witness. Right? The spirit bears witness. We can say, oh, uh, man, he came in, man. Thumb just ain't right. I don't know what it is. And it'll come out later. Because why? Because the righteous God. The righteousness of God is in us, which is the Holy Spirit bears witness with one another that something is right or something won't be right on time. Does this make sense? That's why you don't have to worry about your children drifting. Because if you're living right, and if they know that they know your God, it's only so far they can go. It's, it's watch this here. The, it's the devil's job to make it appear to us that they're out there. And sometimes we get caught up 
in, they're out there. But if we're made the righteousness of Christ, the Bible says in James, the effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man, a righteous man avails what? Much. So I may have to cry some nights. I may have to fast a little bit harder someday. But I know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the what? Morning. When Jesus went through all of that, he went through all of that at what? Night. But when the morning time came, he got up with all power. And when he got up with all power, I got up with all power. Right. You got up with all power. Mm -hmm. So greater is he that is in what? You than mm -hmm. in me, which is he that is in this world, right? So when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord does what? Raise a standard. Why? Because we are the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Y'all see this? So the thing is, is that don't ever let nobody tell you who you not are. It's supposed to be a clear distinction between the church and the world, but it's not. Listen to this here. So many people right now who profess to be waiting for the second coming of Christ do not have on their garments of righteousness. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus say? Let's go to Matthew 22. I'm going to have to finish this up next week. Uh, Matthew 22. And 13. There's a lot of people sit, sitting out there saying, you know, I am the righteousness of Christ. But 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 check out this verse. Now go read this paragraph to a lot of churches and see if they don't run you out of here. You ain't being back. You wasn't invited back next week. <laughs> you, you can't come back, though. They, 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 uh, I, I had to stop you out here. I remember I went to the AA meeting. My, my, my supervisor told me, she said, you're going to be convinced that AA works. And I want you to go. I don't want to go. I'm mandating you go. Know, I go. I went, right? I set up in this, it was like, it was packed all those days. And when you're a newcomer, they sit and watch you. It's like wanting eyes. I, feel, I, I, I thought I felt like some women felt. You know how, how some of these women feel going to the store, you just break, you just feel dirty. Coming home to the guy, just some raping with the eyes. I was sitting up in that place, and I was like, God, damn, man. I'm like, man, they sit there looking. And, and now, when they brought the, the, the thing, uh, to to hit it, they brought it open. They said, uh, "It's open." My name is Larry. I'm uh, uh, recovering alcoholic, recovering addict. This is, and, and I'm recovering uh, crackhead. Uh, this is that. It went all around the room. Now I had to go there for a week. Every day I kept saying, "Pass." Remember Hancock? When Hancock was sitting in that circle, you got some Hancock. Pass. You know, I was just passing. So. So by Wednesday, some of the people's getting irritated. They'll say stuff like, you know, I was there one time, and you know it's hard, you know, for people, newcomers to come in, you know, they feel ashamed. And they looked at me, brother, there's no need to be ashamed. The two guys that were sitting on the side of me patting me on the back saying, there's no need to be ashamed, and this, this, and that. And I'm sitting there like, you know, that cloud, get your hands off. And, and so I sat there and I sat there, and they came back around to me, and I said, and then, and then the lady jumped up and said, you can't keep, if you're going to come up here, you got to admit, we're here to help you, brother. And I said, I don't have no addiction. And they started cussing. Oh, there we go. There you go. Oh, I'm tired of this here. And, and I said, oh, I was sitting here by my job, and y'all there, and watched the devil. The devil said, have you ever drank? Have you, no, no, brother. No, brother. Have you ever drank? Yes. You an alcoholic. It just hit. No, that's what I'm trying to say. The devil is a liar. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> you ain't trying to resurrect that old alcohol head. That was in my grandpappy, my grandpappy, baby, and my man, or my mama, and stuff, and stuff like that. So the thing is, is that I, they looked at me. Then they find out who you are. You got to be a preacher. You got to be a preacher. Talk like that. And so Thursday, they turned around and said, well, um, brother, it's getting ready to start. Just admit it. Just admit it. I said, all right, all right, man, yeah, all right. You want some cake and cookies? It's all good. Okay. Hey, they brought it in. They got all the way around that to me. And I said, I, I put on my Jack Nichols, but I don't want to talk like Jack. I don't want Jack to show up in the room. Y'all have to lay hands on me to get Jack out of me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I said, can y'all handle the truth? And they said, brother, we all here for the truth. You just need to be honest. And, and, and I said, okay. I said, you know what I'm addicted to? Tell us, brother, don't be ashamed. I said, my wife and child. Oh, there you go. You think I don't love my child? You think I don't love my wife? Alcohol destroyed my life, my life. I'm saying that like, I mean, they was giving me like the 
young, young folks say, the business of it. I said, I'm addicted. I said, when I leave work, I go home. When I play ball, I go home. I said, there's no drug, no alcohol, no, like how the black folks say, hair run. There's no hair run out there. There's no cocaine, no hot cocoa zone that's going to keep me away. And by the way, I am a born again believer. So I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. So therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation. You know what they told me Friday? Yeah. You can't come here no more. <laughs> Yeah, I heard you when I was in the I was like, that wasn't my intent. But these folks or the devil using these folks was trying to make me something that I'm not. If you hang around the world long enough, if you watch things long enough, if you hear things long enough, if you entertain things long enough, that devil will convince you that this is who you are. <laughs> so... So when it talks about having your garment on, let's listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 22 and 13. Watch this here. Then said the king to the servant, bind him. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let's go back up. Watch this here. Verse 21, this is where we're reading right here. I hope nobody ain't leaving the rose on. Watch this here. Uh, uh, 22 and 1. Watch this. And Jesus answered and spake unto them a parable and said, see, when, when we're all even outside of Christ, he got to put things in a parable. You know, what if somebody, what if we had to go to McDonald's and there was no pictures up there? And we couldn't hardly read. And the lady sit up there, when you, uh, may I take your order, you sit up there like, uh, and you look at the other person over there saying, I want a big man, give me a big man. Fries and out of pocket. Because you can't read. So Jesus had to speak to all of us in a parable so we can see the kingdom of God. Because we can't see the kingdom of God like I so trained in my eyes all day. It's the hippest trip in America. So I, I can't have those eyes and, and trying to see inside the kingdom of God. Y'all see how that work? So Jesus had to let them see a picture. That's why he called it a parable. Uh, I knew that man, keep it moving. Watch this here. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain man which made a marriage and for his son. And sent for his servant to call them that were bidden to the wedding. That they would not come to these people. They ain't coming. I ain't coming. Going to the regal beat. Going to the strip club. Then I come late. Again, he sent for another servant saying, Tell them which are bidden, behold, I prepare my dinner, my oxen and my fatten are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage, but they made light of it and went their way, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and one one farm, one going to his business. And the Raymond looked, uh, took his servant, and treated him spitefully and slew him. They got man killed, huh? Watch this. But when the king heard of it, he was robbed, and he sent for his army. Look at the Lord. Look at the Lord. That's the first time I ever heard of the Lord talking about sending his armies. Huh? Watch this here. And destroy those murderers and burn up their cities. Now you gonna have all kinds of women and, and, and men and Democrat Party getting on you about that, you know. Then said the Lord, then said he to his servant, The wedding is ready, but they which are bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore in the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together as all as many as they will find, both good and bad. He bring them to church, right? And the wedding, yeah. And verse 11. And when the king came to see the guest, he saw there a man which was not had on a wedding garment. He said unto him, Friend, how canst thou in hither to heaven not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. No word. No word. Can he don't even know Jesus. You see? See, people. See, a lot, of, a lot of church people, watch this here, he's talking to his church, these he, he, people came here, watch this here. You ask them, where do you base your salvation on? Can you tell me? What does the Trinity really mean? Break all three categories down. Can you tell me? Who is Jesus the person and Jesus God? Separate the two. Watch this here. Mary had Jesus. But she didn't have God. She didn't have Christ. Y'all see? She had the flesh, Jesus, but she didn't have Christ. No man can contain Christ. That's why we cast the devils out in the name of Jesus who? 
Christ. And if the devil gets real nutty, we, we say where he's from. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come out. Y'all see? Can't tell you. They can't tell you the basis of why they're saved. But they're saved. I didn't know I heard the message. I came down and gave my heart. Okay, what scripture supports that? Do you see? What makes you justified? What makes you sanctified? What makes you the righteousness of God? The average one can tell you because the only thing that they did was just heard the message. So this is what he's talking. He wants he want some, want some identification because he saw that you got in, but you didn't have the right cloak. You didn't have the righteousness of Christ on. You didn't have the garment on. So how did you get in here? Do you see? You made your way in, but you get ready to exit up out of here. Watch, watch this here. <laughs> watch this here. He said, verse 11, he said, when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there was a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, friend, how come is thou in here and having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servant, bind him, what? Hand and foot. And take him away and cast him out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and wailing of national teeth. For many are what? Called. Few are chosen. Y'all see this? Now this is Jesus. Now this kind of stuff is not going to be preached because if you preach this kind of stuff, the tide may stop. The pillars may go. Y'all know who the pillars are. The pillars are the heavy hitters. The pillars are the heavy tides. So they may leave. So when you start to see the pillars leave, the people leave, the church goes down because of this right here. You, you, you're really reading what's in red and what uh, Jesus said. Listen to this. Jesus confirmed that those who do not have the right wedding garment on, which is the righteousness of Christ, will be forever lost and cast into the lake of fire. We might profess to be followers of Jesus, which is why the man in the par parable actually was actually at the wedding. But a mere profession does nothing for us. Huh? We must have the garment of Christ on to be saved. It must be a continuous lifestyle. You know, people give me when they say, I'm, I, I'm prayed up today. Well, wait a minute. Couldn't you be prayed down? Is there anything in between when the Bible says men ought to always pray and what? Faint not. So we, it's, it, it's no way in the world that I could be prayed up. I, I, I have a balance in life, just like the ministry. The ministry is just not predicated on casting out devils. We're going to preach about healing. We're going to preach about prosperity. We're going to preach about family, right living. It's a holistic view of what the church should look like, right? We give the devil no play in saying that we are a devil casting out church. That's all that we know for. That's why our church do not say mercy seat deliverance. Church. Mercy seat church, come that you may obtain favor. Because when you say deliverance to a lot of people, they're not going to come because that devil is going to tell them we're going to put you out on front street. No, we're going to put the enemy out on front street and then clothe you with righteousness. Amen. Y'all see, see how this works? So, so the thing is, is that when Jesus was sitting here talking about righteousness, for us today, he's talking about right living. What is right living? That's easy for the believer, the child of God. We find that right living in Ephesians 6, 12, the armor of God. That's our righteousness. That's our righteousness uh, 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 predicated on what God has already done. So we have to stay armored. Right? We have to have our helmet of salvation. We have to have the breastplate. We have to have our waist girded. We have to have our feet with our shoes preparing for the gospel of peace. And having all the sword of the spirit, which is the what? Word of God. Being in ready to cut that devil down, right? Why is it that we don't turn our back? Because the believer never turns his back to the enemy, and that's what we see in the church. Because anytime that you see that cracks in our armor, that means that the armor has to fall off eventually, so we turn our backs and what? Run. He said, in the latter days men shall depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. That means that that person in that church has turned their back and they ran away from God and the enemy is striking them down. Back it up with scripture. In Acts chapter 19, the Bible says that Simon the sorcerer came out to, to, and said, I want this power. Right? He come out to, to, to uh, the seven sons of Sceva, come out to, to cast out devils, right? What did the devil do to them? The devil uh, whipped them, took off that 
scrolls and they ran out, right? So if they ran from the devil, they had to run with their backs turned toward them because they never belonged. A believer stands in confronted the, the enemies of darkness. Give you an example. Let the enemies of darkness come against your children. You ain't gonna turn your back. You may cry and, and be and be thrown off it and, and what happened, but all you have to do is just stand firm because it's gonna be like a, a furnace that swells up in you. That word is gonna come up in you. The righteousness of God is gonna come up in you. The love of God is gonna come up in you and say, stand and look that devil and tell him where he can go. Amen. Let that devil come against your job. Yeah, they cut you out. But if you know who you are in Christ, you know that that door is either going to close right there, God is going to open up another door. You bind the enemy where you at until you get ready to leave. Amen. See how this works? Let the enemy try to hit you with some type of sickness. Yeah, that's what the doctor say. He got it up, held it up in the x-ray thing, held it up in the light up there. But that's all you need to know so you can take that and, and, and start binding and casting out. Why? Because you have made the righteousness of Christ. This is separates uh, men from goats. Sheep from goats. Do you see what I'm saying? It, 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 it's because what Christ has already done. Right? Watch this here. Right. The message of the gospel of Jesus Christ taking on nature, dying for our sin, and giving us his life has become a formal and plain and simply misunderstood. People mistaken what Christ did uh, on the cross for righteousness. They thinking that he died that I may live right. No, so I don't, I don't, I don't do what everybody else do. No, that's not what he's talking about. You, what about that stuff that still is a stronghold? Back up with scripture. Rich, rich young ruler, let me hear him. He come to Jesus and said, good master, uh, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, the simple fact that he called Jesus good, he put himself equal to God because when he said that he obeyed his parents, he did everything what was right in uh, since his child, childhood, that made him equal with God. That means that somebody on, on that standard would judge him as being good, right? So he put himself on the same level as Christ. That's why he called him good. What did Jesus turn around and tell him? Why God's calling me good? You know, boy, it's only one that's good. He brought him right back down. In other words, he told the boy, everything which you did from your youth is good, but thou lack is what? One thing, that wild horse. That wild horse. He said, if you lack one thing, instead of what you have, pick up your cross, follow me. That wild horse was so strong, what that man do? He turned around and walked away. He showed his back to the enemy. Believers always never show their back to the enemy. That dude, the Bible said, he turned away. And he walked away sad. But he didn't stick around to hear the benefits of being a righteous, the righteousness of Christ. The disciples said, well, Lord, we had left everything. We left mother, father, businesses, home. Jesus said that there is not one man, woman, boy, or girl that has left the world, watch this here, for my sake, that in this lifetime and the lifetime to come, that he won't have a hundredfold. Right? Isn't that what you said? Yeah. All right. Watch this here. The message of the gospel is being misunderstood that there is no power in the churches anymore. No power. No power. In other words, I can prove to you, about 75% of our churches right now is probably having church or had church or getting ready to have church. They're going to they, they gonna, they gonna, they gonna give announcements. They're going to sing. They're going to praise and worship. They're going to preach. And they're going to they're going to have the prayer team to come up. And they're going to dismiss. And the devil that came in is going to leave out with that person. Because somebody is sitting up in there saying, I got prayer for this anger. And, and that's it. No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's good that you come down for anger. But let's see what's fueling that anger in your saved life. Let's let the righteousness of Christ be put on in you that you may, that, 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 you, that your anger may resonate that Christ has died for your anger. See how that works? He, he, took a, he took stripes that you may be glad. He took stripes that you may be happy. Do you see? Okay, let me walk this street. When he took stripes, if you're angry, right? 
He took stripes that should heal in the area that's vexing you to be angry. Do you see? If you're confused, he took stripes in the area that your mind will be settled. Do this make sense? So, so when when a person goes in and he say, let's just say this person say, I'm having a marital problem. Well, you know, in, in that right there alone, the devil has convinced both persons that each one of them is the devil. Because you wouldn't be, nobody is going to argue within themselves in a marriage or, or friendship. So they're going to make somebody the devil. But Jesus took stripes that there may be peace in there. So when he does, when he reminds us what he has done, when he reminds us what our mind comprehended, he took lashes that you don't have to go through that when the man can see it, when the woman can see it, they're reconciled to God, now they reconcile to each other. That's how that works. Everything in the, in, the, in the believer's life is predicated on the cross. Even when we cast out devils, now I'm beginning to know to have the person to keep seeing Jesus. When you keep seeing Jesus, it's keeping that cross. It's keeping that cross. When you can see the blood, when you can see the nail, that's all you, that's all you do is focus on that. That, that one, once the mind begins to focus on him, the demons have to express themselves. Or they just have to leave. Does this make sense? It's no power. It's no problem. We can look around and see right now. Because if I was selling popcorn, doing fish fries and all this stuff, and advertising on TV saying that this is what we're going to do, don't y'all think the church would be packed? Yes, it would. Because you're because the church is doing what the world expects for them to do. To do what the world does. We don't do that. We walk by a different beat. Even if it's just one person here, we walk by a different beat. Because here's the thing. Jesus, this morning got real slim, y'all. When Jesus began, the Holy Spirit began to move around the way. How you doing? Where are you doing from? How you get? You see, he was moving around the room. Remember when the, 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 the parable of the soul, when he said we sold wheat and tares, how did the, the, the tares get in? He said, let me go and gather and, 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 and burn them up. He said, no, 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 no. He said, let the wheat and the tares hang out with each other. He said, but at the end of the harvest, he said, I'm going to send my angel. And what are you going to do? He's going to separate the wheat and the tares. He's going to bundle the tares up. And he's going to take them out there and burn. Yes, sir. Do y'all see this? But we just need to make sure that we have our garments on one last point, and I'm out. To support that the church today, not all of them, but the majority of them, not have no power, prove it. Second Timothy, and we'll close right there, and I'll pick this up next week. Second Timothy 2, 15. I'm pretty sure this is a familiar, uh, I mean, 3 and 5. Second Timothy 3 and 5, I'm sorry. This is a familiar passage. Watch this here. Because People in the church do not have their garments on. This is the result. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such what? Turn away. When they turn away, they're turning their backs. They're not walking. Look, a person that's fully armored can't walk in uh, a person that's fully armored can walk in front of his enemy. You know, even if the person is side eyeing you, you're not turning your back, you're looking at them like this. You're not walking out, of, you're not just gonna turn your back on somebody that got a knife. They're trying to kill you. You wanna. And sometimes, for a believer, we just stand on ground. Like I gotta tell you, I just gave this example. Let somebody come against your children. Let somebody come against you. Let somebody come against your house. You're going to find out just how much, how much God you really have because that's something that's really dear to you. You see what I'm saying? Now watch this here. Now here's the therapeutic thing, what God does, or the Holy Spirit does, that's working inside of us. The righteousness is already done because he's already died, but now he's working out some hell in you. So if somebody comes against your house, your children, whatever, that flesh rises up. So while you're in the flesh, the Holy Spirit keeps in and saying, I'm going to work this out. You see, he said, you see how that works? That's mercy. That's mercy for the believer. You turn around, you can see that you wanted to really, really tell them people a piece of your mind. That's how the Lord works. That's his mercy 
only for people who's clothed with righteousness. It don't work for people who don't have it. You can make a person that's outside of God see their stuff all day long. That's called conscience. That's called conscience. Because all you got to do is stand in front of the judge. The judge going to make you have some conscience. I'm going to give you 40 years. Woo! I got it. That's conscience. Watch this here. I'm going to give you 40 years. Lord, have mercy. You see, you see the difference? <laughs> I never forget, last story, I was hanging around some, some, some crazy uh, people in middle school, and they went to the mall and stole. And I did the foolish thing, dude. We, we got right by the slide doors outside. I think it was J.C. Penney. Got right outside the slide door. Dude put it, dude stole a ham and some puma shoes, pony shoes. And yeah, it was a ham. And some pony shoes. How you put ham and pony shoes in the same bag? But anyway, uh, <laughs> the dude said, hey, can this for me? And, and I catch up with you. Dumb me, picked up the bag, walked out of the store. I saw two of these people. They one grabbed me and one grabbed me. Can we talk to you, sir? I was like, ah. Oh. I said, he got my little bag in here like this. Here. He stayed behind the racks. And, and I took off and started running. I was running around J.C. Penney's parking lot like there was somewhere to run. I, and, and you know what, them folks said, oh, he's fast. He, oh, that boy's fast. So I was, I was running zigzagging through these cars, so I saw people getting down, and I got behind some tires like this here. But, I, but you got to look up. And I looked up, there he is, and I took off right. I was jumping on cars and, and stuff like that. And I saw this man drive by the man and said, get in the car. Get in the back of the truck and lay down. Wow. Got back and laid down like this here. And, 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 and the man took off. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm gone. And, and all of a sudden the truck stopped. And the lady said, you look open your eyes now. <laughs> you look open your eyes and come on out. <laughs> I opened up my eyes and I, I tried to jump and they held me down. And, and, and I sat there and I was like, wow. Went to court, things like that. And the judge said, I, I never forget it. Her name was Judge Pillar. Judge Pillar said, you stole a ham and some shoes? And, and, and I said, no ma'am. It was this dude, and, and they ain't catch the dude, you know. It was his. And it, it's about you. And you're not judging me over here. You a fool. You this and you that. And, and I'm sitting there like, like this here. And my aunt said over there is crying. My aunt said over there crying. Lady said, she said, I'm gonna give you the max. And you look at you look you looking honor at you. You know, that's the old folk trying to you RJ, y'all know about it. So you look at real honor. She said, I give you, I give you a year and a half of this. And I buzzed and I said, a year and a half? It's just ham! And she said, I thought you didn't take it. Uh, <laughs> and, and my court point lawyer did like this and shut your mouth. And, and so my aunt said over there crying. Watch this here. She said, you know what? She said, you didn't have to give you a year. And, and, and instantly, I, I mean, the tears just ran. And I said, but it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. I, I, was just, I didn't know. And that lady saw my aunt. And she looked at my aunt and said, Miss Lang, I know you're doing all you can to raise this boy. She said, only because of you, I'm reducing him down to 30 days. Mercy. Mercy. Why? Because she was righteous. Parents never give up on your children. Never, never. When, 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 and she looked at me, she said, and you, Come here, approach this bench. I walked up there and, and she said, uh, she said, I want you to take a look at her. And she was over there crying and, 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 and uh, she said, I want you to tell her that you that you love her. I love you. She said, don't you tell her right now. You tell her every day before you get I want you to report back here to me. And yada yada yada. She said, but you getting off. She said, you getting off big time. She said, but I want you to realize that when you do something real stupid and foolish, you know what could happen. She said, third day. And now, now, now me when I left the bench, I said, well, I, I, I guess I'll go to school. And I saw a guy walk over there. Guy came from that way and that way. And they came in. And, and I went, wait, hey, man. Hey, hey, man, what y'all doing? Hey, hey, man, what y'all doing? And she said, did I tell him to give you 30 days? I was like, no, 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 no. I, I went in the back. And, and it's amazing how those doors close and the world changes. They dressed you out. I had to stay 24 hours back there in the back by myself in the cage. And all kind of thoughts go through you. I was kicking the thing, looking at the camera up there in the corner, messing with it, and you hear this intercom. Get set down, boy. 
Hey, you feel And then the guys start talking to each other. Hey, what you got, man? What's your name? Where you from? What school you going to, man? Where you from, man? And I said, I'm from there. I'm from there. And, and boy, when they rolled them doors the next day, they said, y'all, you know, they do head count. And I'm sitting up there, and I, and, and, and I was like, man, I'm in jail. I'm really in prison. This is real. But somebody restrict you from leaving and dress you out and you have to follow protocol, you're in bondage. But the part that I want us to get is that I had only 30 days. This is about some people with 30 years. Life. Nobody's interceding for them. You see? And when I got out, Mama told me to walk home. You walk home, you know. And I walked home, I was funky as all that. I, I, I you know, had to admit, don't take showers and things like that. And uh, I, I took showers, but I didn't take no shower last week, I don't think. And I was riding, I was going out the street, right now your arm is moving right along. And so I was just going and going and going. I finally made it home, I stopped outside the door, out of our house. And I looked, and I started, well, as I was walking, I, I started seeing people, they knew all their business. But people asked, what you did, you know? And I stood outside the house, and a sense of shame came over me. I was so ashamed to go in that house. I stood outside there, and and uh, and I finally rung the doorbell, and I came in. It was just total silence. Nobody didn't say anything. And I, I went in. I took a shower, came out, and ate. Told my aunt, I said, "I'm going around the corner." What you go? You know, that's the hell we'll lose, you know. And I stayed in the house and I went to school. The shame that I had to endure. Everybody knew. Everybody knew. The teachers knew that the teachers were sending me work over at the place. And the, and the only thing that I had to hold on to, I had mercy. I had mercy. So I'm going to finish this up next week. And.